Fakirs. Hindustani art music has hundreds of composition addressed to Sufi saints and peers. Names of Nizamuddin Awliya and his famous disciple Amir Khusro resonate through many much valued khayal compositions as also in evocative Kavali music. Both these forms have now captured ears, heads and hearts of many non-Indian music lovers all over the world. Why are Sufis so intimately associated with music, especially in India? I know that I do not know enough to answer this simple question. But I can tell you what may arouse musicians' interest in a Sufi Fakir. Fakir in Arabic means poor, but not in terms of material wealth. A true Fakir knows and admits that irrespective of what is in his pocket, he is poor in the sight of God and needs his mercy. I have met three such fakirs, poor in appearance but rich in contentment. Once around 1984, I was working with a group of ethnomusicologists. I had taken them on a field trip to Jezuri, a famous seat of the martial god Khandoba. Just a few paces away from the temple was a tree. Standing under the cool, soothing shades of the tree, along with my foreign friends, we were animatedly engaged in conversations about various issues. It was some time before I noticed a fakir quietly sitting by. When I looked at him, he said softly, Salam. Having already held forth on almsmongering as one of the unwelcome features of Indian life, I ignored him. He then stood up. Sighing, almost reluctantly, he advanced a step and said, Hamara salam apne kubul nahi kiya. I was a little annoyed by his persistence. I shot back at him with some asperity. Yes, because I do not intend to give you anything. I was rather pleased with my urbane but clear answer. He smiled shyly, his eyes carried an amused expression. Playing with his beard, he said, Ham kya batai? Aap to padhe likhe log hai. लेकिन सलाम को सलाम से ही कबूल किया जाता है मैंने सलाम किया था आप में जो खुदा है उसको आपको सलाम करना था मेरे में जो भगवान है उसको यही तो असली लेन देन है to say the least i was dumbfounded here we were discussing essentially devotional character of hindustani music but what about the musicians the fakir went his way leaving us to our own confusion the second fakir I met was sunning himself in Takshila in Pakistan where we were visiting ancient ruins, some of which had Buddhist background. After some intensive wandering, we felt thirsty and asked the chaukidar if we could get some water to drink. He got up, picked up a tin and went to the ancient pool from which Buddhist monks must have taken water. The curator of the museum who was accompanying us felt a bit nervous and said, Be careful about the... But before he could complete his warning, the fakir intervened and assured us with words, Sahab, badi jagah ka pani hai, kuch nahi hoga. He drank and felt fulfilled, more due to a fakir's faith in the sacredness of a Buddhist site than anything else. And then, in the same Sark event, we were proceeding to Murri, a closed group of subcontinental ethnomusicologists. On our way, we espied a small waterfall and alongside was a villager selling apples shiny, fragrant and inviting. We purchased some and began eating them, rather too eagerly perhaps for grown-ups. A fakir was standing nearby. He watched us and smiled warmly. Our white-collared conscience felt a bit uncomfortable. Was he thinking that we were behaving greedily 
and almost like spoiled children. To lighten the tension, I asked the fakir, Salam, kaha chale akele? He waved his hands joyously and replied as if enoting a lytic poeting line, Jahan se aaye, wahin chale, and softly chuckled to himself. The Sufi mystics thought as the Indian mystics did. Both spoke the same language of the man in mind. Was it to express this sameness that Sufis took to music? Indian religious temper has always relied on music and myth in a major way. Not so much to propagate metaphysical ideas, philosophical doctrines or didactic messages. Music and religion joined forces in India to enable devotees or religious seekers to enter a liberated state of mind, a state which would allow them to walk above the ground and still be rooted in the real world. Woo-hoo! <laughs> 